She was determined, determined to live. She was cancer free. I feel like I was in really good hands and I can't say enough about the treatment that I got. Things do change, nothing stays static. A new day will come. Welcome to Hope is Here, I'm Carla Hill. Being a child means endless hours playing outdoors with friends. However, there are some children who never get to fully participate in recreation. For instance, children who are ventilator dependent are limited in their activities and enjoying childhood to the fullest is not often realized. Yet, there is this camp, one very special place where children dependent on ventilators once a year go to the beach, float in the pool, and enjoy just being a kid without restriction and fear. These campers enjoy the best week of their year being supported by a well-known children's hospital and trained volunteers who make childhood dreams come true. This is the story of VAC Camp. VAC Camp actually started at Dr. Moises Sinser. He was a pediatric pulmonologist and he actually got the vision of these children that had tracheostomies or dependent on mechanical ventilation uh, equipment, said they, they actually can have a normal life. He was the first person in the United States to send a child on mechanical ventilation home, and he was able to go home on this equipment. And that happened many, many years ago, and he said, well, why cannot have a normal life? So he envisioned to start a very small camp what he decided, okay, let's do things that they can do. Let's, let's start thinking uh, like games and people get familiar with them, they feel comfortable. Yes. Many years ago, when my children went to camp, I decided to give an opportunity to children who were prisoners, that's the real world. On the hospital, then when we start sending patients a technology dependent home, they were prisoners in their houses. They hardly went out, so my idea was to bring these children to the mainstream. And that's where it started. It started very, very few um, children and families, were five or six, surrounded by pulmonologists and the nursing, and everybody helped them to have a normal life. And it became a whole week. And then we, it was opened up to the United States. So we started having children from New York, Chicago, uh, Georgia, other places, because it was the first camp of that nature in the United States. So the vision of Dr. Simser was the first of many things. Let's first, sending the patient home. Second, making their normal life. Back camp. Back camp. Where's the party at? Where's the party at? And now we have a camp that they can, they enjoy it. We have uh, children that they said, I, in my own home, they look me different. Here, I feel like the same person, like anybody else. I can do everything I want. And it's not only for the children with have the, 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 the problem, the volunteers. It's the first, volunteers are teenagers, school teenagers. And they are the first time, actually, with a child that has certain disabilities. And for them to see their, their courage, their strength, they love it. We, since then we have children that go, all these patients become actually uh, physicians, nurse practitioners, respiratory therapists, nurses. They enjoy it so much and they said, I want to do the same. I want to be part of it. And I want to be part of it as in the medical point. So, so I believe, and, it, and the vision was bigger than just one child with a disability. It was a family, siblings, and the volunteers. And is what is it making it since 1986? We have 37 years just to win this camp. You excited for this year? Yeah. You are? 
that feeling, that sensation, that they give you that joy is, is, is unbelievable. And that's the reason you keep doing it. What an amazing place. We are so lucky to have joining us two families who enjoy this VAC camp experience every year. I want to introduce in studio Sheila and Mateo Gonzalez and at home, Paula, Andrew, and his sister Isabella Nagel. Welcome to the show, everyone. Thank you. Thank you for everything. Yes, Thank you of for course. Us. I'm, this Thank show. You. Thank Thank you for the you're very welcome. This show is really special. So I'm going to start with Sheila and Mateo. How did you find out about that camp? Okay, when we visited uh, the hospital, mm -hmm. pulmonologists, they invited us because it's a program from the hospital, from Nick Klaus children. So one of the founders, so that was Mateo's doctor, Dr. Simpson, he invited us and he told yeah, us to go. Simpson. Dr. Simpson. That's right. So he invited us to the, to the camp and then everything started. And how long have you been going? We have been going for 11 years. All oh, forever? 11 yeah. years. 11 years. Uh, well, I want to bring in the Nagel family. Andrew, you are 13 and I understand you've been going to that camp for around 10 years years is that right yes that's very true and is that camp as special to you as it is to mateo um yeah and, and like it's super amazing um with the vac camp it's like it's amazing good to hear so paula why is that camp so special to you to me to see my the the happy in my in my kids they are so happy every time over there and to be and to see Andrew how enjoying he can be himself over there no worry about he's getting sick and and I don't need it and and, and uh, I have help over there like he's his doctors and and the volunteers they are amazing with them they make him feel like he himself he can enjoy them enjoy all too much so, Isabella, this question is for you. I understand that you go to camp as well. Now, how does that work? Um, it works because I go with my brother, and it's a very fun experience for me. Like my mom and Andrew said, uh, I get to experience new friends and people like and Andrew with my age and Andrew's age, well, since we're twins. Um, yeah, and it's super fun. Um, and there's things that Andrew has never done, and so it's like an opportunity for him to experience as a normal teenager. Paula, I want to come back to you and ask you, why is this so important for Andrew when you see him once a year surrounded by these campers? How does that make you feel? Why is this so important? Well, he's no, he no had a friend. He's always here at home, and then when he go over there, he's he he is so happy. The the that for me is the payback. <laughs> it's a it, it's either is is seven days. Uh, and they doing a lot of things. They doing a lot of things. We get tired and everything, but it's painful because to see his face to enjoy every day by day and hour he never get tired we we, we had to force him to him to rest because you know he had only one loan yes. and he get tired so it's so easy but he he don't he don't get tired over there <laughs> he he keep him going he forced himself but he he want to be there and, and and to see him happy is what the they made me more happy. That's amazing. And like that, he is 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 helping and everything to him to to develop him, like uh, Isabella said, the teenager, enjoy other kids like he never had. Paula, tell me about Andrew's day. Um, you talked about him. This is really an important time of year for him. Is Andrew at home most of the time? Yes, ma'am. He had an uh, online class. He attending uh, all the loan, and he is here with the nurse. He had a nurse, uh, 12, uh, 12, by, uh, 12 by 7. And thank God we always is, uh, but he's always here. 
we take it sometimes when you know over the weekends or if we go into the to the pool or some or something outside when he's feel good but he most of the time he's here by himself with the nurse sheila you mentioned dr simpson the visionary of that camp can you tell us a little bit about him? What do you, what was he like? Dr. Simpson was, an, is, was um, an angel alive. I mean, now he's on, on, on uh, heaven, but since uh, we met him, I met him when Mateo was very sick. I mean, when he was first diagnosed and everything, and he gave me that calm, trying to say everything will be fine, everything is gonna be fine, you know? Nothing is forever. And after that, uh, effect, Mateo got better. And when we started going to camp, I could not imagine all the happiness in the camp. I mean, they were their ventilators. They were all those machines. They, Andrew and Mateo, they are able to talk. They are able to be without the ventilator when they are good, you know. But many of the kids, they are not. They are vent dependents 24 hours. But they depend on the, my son, for example, they depend on the ventilator only when he sleeps or when he is sick. Mm -hmm. But all these kids are so happy and see all the energy that Dr. Simpson ha, uh, used to have for the, for the camp was, I mean, no many people in the world, you know, could do that for, for this, because he gave his life for the camp, his life, totally. I enjoy to be with you for back camp is because it's a big opportunity as for all of us as people and human beings to get better. Andrew, do you remember the first time you were able to get in the water or or what are your memories of it now? Uh, I guess I you know I do not remember anything, <laughs> but you know, the first time I went in the water with the volunteers and with everyone else, it was amazing. And Sheila, tell us about VAT camp. How is it different from any other camp that maybe you looked into or that other people experience? Okay, the, the first thing is all the kids have a tracheostomy. All the kids have medical issues, but that doesn't in means that they can have fun during the camp. All the volunteers, they work super hard in the, for, the, for the kids to make them uh, feel happy and do everything. So all the volunteers as nurses, doctors, uh, the respiratory therapies and the young uh, teenagers that come to play a very important role to play with the kids and make them. So this camp, um, there is no other in Miami. Even you pay or no pay, there is not another like this where kids could be the kids. Even they have medical issues, they could you know enjoy life, go to a pool, play ball, play with the other kids, have uh, animals around, do this, do that. That's I mean, even all the medical issues that they have that I know that is not simple, they could enjoy life like other kids. And Sheila, similar to Paula, what was it like when you first saw Mateo doing these things that you never thought he would be possible? It's funny because um, the year before we were living in New York, so the first time we came to Miami, when we were in New York, the doctor told me, listen, keep away, you are going to Florida, keep away from the beach, keep away from the pools. Mateo won't be able to enjoy those things. That's very dangerous for Mateo. But when we met Dr. Simpson, he said, what? What are you talking about? He's gonna go to the water and he's gonna do all the things that other kids do. You would see that's safe. Nothing has happened, never. So he will be fine. So when we went to the beach, there were plenty of fire rescues, uh, all the nurses, everybody ready in case something happened. But thank God, up to today, after all these 10 years, 11 years, never anything had happened. And he has played with the fire rescue people, with everybody, the, the, the um, volunteers and all the kids, and 
thing that nothing has happened, but that I was our reality. Sorry. Mateo, I was going to ask you, what is the experience of camp like for you? Fun, exciting, mind-blowing, and, well, yeah. What's your favorite thing about camp? Well, the games, when I have time, and I'll do my favorite friend, and I about too. Your favorite friend? I love that. Oh, Isabella, <laughs> how are you supporting your brother when he's there at home um i support him by telling him you got this there's just because you're at home doesn't mean that you're not you can't experience the things that that normal teenagers do like when we go out to eat or to like go play go go to an arcade for example um i tell him it doesn't matter that you have the trait as long as you have fun and you see yourself as a normal teenager, you will have the most wonderful experience ever. And Isabella, one more question. What is it like when you see your brother at camp? I feel really proud of him and I see him that he's making new friends and I sometimes get emotional because I, because my mom always, my mom told me once that I don't know if he'll, he'll experience the things that I do, but when I saw him first at camp, uh, well, not when I was little, but like when I started to get older, I saw him, he was having more fun and like a normal teenager. So here's a question for all of you. What happened over COVID? So Sheila, tell me what that was like when COVID hit. Uh, that was sad because for us it was, close doors and don't go anywhere because these kids they got seriously sick when they got sick i mean a cold could be something serious they could go out to the hospital for that imagine for a COVID. so for us it was two years with the doors windows and everything closed nobody entrance nobody goes out period for us it was like that so no camp we tried to do something through internet through zoom with the volunteers some of the volunteers the leaders and that was very nice of them, but we were not able to out at all. Paula, what about you? When um, COVID hit, what was that like for your family? And then what was it like to finally come back? Well, for me, it was very scary because, you know, Andrew had an chronic lung disease when it's a respiratory problem, and that wasn't a respiratory <laughs> virus. When in, and, and I was very scary. But thank God everything went well. He never gets sick. And what is respect to the back camp, we were very upset. Because, you know, we don't have nothing to do for the week for the spring break. Because, you know, we don't have either the money to go anywhere. And we always come with a with the week to have fun, to enjoy enjoy that week, the spring break. And then, well, I tried to do my best here to put in a, in a pool in the, my backyard. <laughs> and then we all enjoy it every day. So we will take care very much when we just, uh, the time that after the, the spring break, uh, the other people they are organized the, the, the Camp, they call us, Bella call us to tell us that they're gonna do some activities through the Zoom. And that was awesome because they were so happy to see her, her friends. Either that was no person in person, but I was in the Zoom and they were so happy. Paula, you touched on it just a little bit. I wanna ask you and Sheila, how important are the volunteers at that camp to you and your family? Oh my God. That kids, they had a big heart. That kids, what they, they, they select for each high school here. They say there is for, give it their, their volunteer hours. But I think they give it everything. How we go to the camps, they, they don't leave under one minute. Or, or one of the campers. They play e everything with them. And either 
we, through the year, they talk with them, they call to ask them how they're feeling, they remember their birthday. They either come, come over here to their house and they give him a surprise for his birthday. This, the kids are very important and they help him to his develop and his, to be in a normal kid. They treat him like a normal kid and that's very important. They had a big heart. They are very good kids. Tell me your experience with the volunteers. Okay, we have like different volunteers. We have the teenagers, and I would say what the Dr. Simpson said, we have the cream, because they were the cream of the high school teenagers. They were very special. I mean, as Paula said, they go for volunteer hours, but after that, after the camp, you said it's no volunteer hours because they give everything. They spend 10 or 10, 12 hours daily in the camp and they never tire, they are always happy, they are always with a smile. No matter if they are tired or not, they are always with a smile. So these kids, they are special. These teenagers are, I mean, they are the cream. Yeah, just how we got here, Pierce, last year. Yeah, we got to do something cool. Let's go. VIP. <laughs> One last thought from Dr. Franco about what her thoughts are on camp and what she'd like the public to know about VAC camp. So a couple of things that they, things that people don't know that this camp, first of all, is 100% for free. So this is, this is driven by obviously donations, they, they mean the same families, other families, or other people who realize, and so that is, is critical because it's a, it's, it, it takes time and, and money, of course. But also I want them to know that even if it's for free, this is for anybody who can actually come to see this. I, I would love to see other people to realize that, that you can do it. Other families, they might not even know that we exist and this type of camp exists and the things that we do because we want them to come. We want them to, to enjoy this because we have seen the change in these children's lives. When they come for the first time, they come out of their bubble. We had children that have been severely depressed and the families make the effort to come and after that they change their life. They fell for the first time that they were doing a normal life. And they did actually dealt with other teenagers or children their age in a way, or, or at least teenagers. And they said, oh, you know what? They do understand what we're going through. And they became friends. So that made a difference. I think families don't know how much difference it is until they actually try it. And we are not only here for the children in Florida, we are here for the whole United States. And actually sometimes we have some people from other countries have come and because they realized and they found out that they exist and they come and they love it and they try to come every year. So, so that's what we believe that it makes a difference because if your child has not ever experienced something like this and the first time you do it, you would like to come back. So for both of the moms, and I'll, I'll start with you, Sheila, that camp is designed for very special children like Mateo, like Andrew, but how does it help parents during that week? Uh, that week is amazing because we can talk with other parents. We have, you know, because the volunteers, Mateo is part of the volunteers and we don't care, we don't take care of the kids for that week. You know, the nurses and the volunteers, the teenagers, they are the ones who take care of the kids. And then the parents, like Paola, me, all of that, they, we talk, we play, we Mommy. smile, we have fun. We talk to the doctors, we have lunch together, we have dinner together. Um, so for us, it's a blast. It's like, you know, it's our week too. Uh, Paola, how do you feel about the week for you as a parent? For me, I get tired. <laughs> it's very enjoyable. I love it. I love it because uh, it's, 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 a, it's, you know, like I can tell you, it's, it's, to see these two happy made me more happy. This I know I enjoy more, I enjoy more in them because, you know, like Chile say, we get together with all the parents that are coming from different places because they're coming for, for out of the state from out of the country. And then we, uh, we had time to talk with each other, to know each other, to talk about them, what, about their kids, how they improve, how they are doing. And then for us, it's, it, I, I talk a lot <laughs> and I get tired to talk <laughs> because it's, I talk with everybody and 
and we're going along so well, either with the doctors, with the, like Jayla said, with all the volunteers and everybody, because we are a family. The back camp is a family. It's so sad when it's somebody left, like you know, when they turn 21, they leave. And it's, we are so sad that day because they leave because we've been every year to thinking about this camp and we enjoy it and you know, you get, without this family, they get part of the, your family too. So Andrew, let me know, are you counting down to next year's camp? Uh, yes, I, yes. What about you, Mateo? I are, agree, yes. You're looking forward to next year's camp? Yep. It sounds like a lot of fun. Thank you for sharing your beautiful stories about, as I said earlier, one of the happiest places on earth. It sounds like Andrew and Mateo agree with that. And we can see from their faces that this is certainly true. You've described hope and happiness all bundled up in an event that takes place once a year for a group of some very special children and young adults. Thank you again for joining us.